Hello, everybody. We've come to the end of another week, and I hope you've enjoyed being in God's Word, reading these five chapters in Hebrews this week that are part of our uh, New Testament reading plan. And by the way, if you don't have a copy of the reading plan, it's on our website, so you'll find it there on our homepage. We had printed out the whole year. Uh, and if you're new, don't try to catch up. Just start with where we are. Um, it's dated, so you can find out where we are. In fact, next week we're going to be in 1 Timothy. Today we're wrapping up Hebrews in chapter 13, the last uh, chapter. And uh, let me also just uh, encourage you to join us for worship uh, this Sunday. If you're able to join us in person and on campus here at First Baptist in Rock Hill, please do that. If you're not able to yet, uh, then uh, we welcome you to worship with us virtually. Our service will be on YouTube, uh, our church, uh, our YouTube channel, our, our Facebook page, and uh, you can get a link to it from our website and our uh, Instagram uh, post and uh, Twitter accounts, all that. So everything will link you to the service. It will go live starting at 7 o'clock this Sunday. Our own campus services are at 9 o'clock, our traditional service with hymns, and 11 o'clock, our more contemporary service with the Praise Band and Leanna Crawford uh, leading us and doing a great, great job. So invite someone to worship, worship Jesus with you and with us this week. But we're in Hebrews 13 today, and I want to focus on verses 2 and 3. So verses 2 and 3. Let's read those together. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by this some have entertained angels without knowing. Remember the prisoners as though in prison with them, and those who are ill-treated, since ye, you yourselves also are in the body, um, meaning that you're, you're in this physical body, and there's times we've been mistreated, so remember what it feels like to be mistreated. So notice the, the focus in those two verses, entertaining strangers or showing hospitality to strangers. Verse 3, remembering prisoners as though in prison, as though you were in prison with them. And then those who have been ill-treated, just like you're in the body, and can be ill-treated too. Meeting the needs of people who have a need. You know, strangers, traveling, um, um, uh, immigrants have needs. Prisoners have needs. People who've been ill-treated, who are less fortunate, who've been abused, whether sexually or physically, have needs. Meeting needs. Now, obviously, we're to meet the needs of fellow believers because he begins in verse 1 by chapter 13 and verse 1 by saying, let love of the brethren continue. And then he talks about hospitality, prisoners, and all of that. So obviously, any of our fellow believers, brothers and sisters in Christ who fit this category, were to care about. But the early believers were known for, for caring about people in these predicaments who were not believers. In fact, you'll remember uh, Jesus in Matthew 25 Um in verse 41 and following, then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, ye accursed ones, into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, you did not invite me in. I was naked, you did not clothe me. I was sick, you did, uh, I, I was sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And they will say, Lord, when did we do that? And, and to you, and he said, and he'll answer them, uh, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Hmm. So caring for those who fit these categories, strangers, immigrants, travelers, prisoners, people who've been ill-treated, mistreated in any kind of way. And I think most of us get that we're supposed to do that. But here's one of the problems in 2020. Our nation is so divided between left and right, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, and conservatives. We cannot have an honest, heartfelt conversation about how to do this because the extremes are way over here and way over there, and we're not finding good solutions. And the result is the people who need the help are suffering because we're over here fighting all these battles because we're so stubborn and so locked into either this party or that party, this philosophy or that philosophy, and we're missing the very thing Jesus said. See, as followers of Jesus, don't commit yourself to be you know, hook, line, and sinker and toe with any political party. You be a follower of Jesus Christ. And sometimes those on the right are going to be correct, and sometimes... Uh, those on the left are going to be correct. Sometimes Republicans are going to be correct, and sometimes Democrats are going to be correct. But most of the time, we're going to find the best solution somewhere in the middle on some of these things. 
But we can't do that in America today, and that's a shame. Christians should not be part of the problem. We should be part of the solution because helping these people matters. Doing it the right way matters. Now, if we can't fix the country, we can fix ourselves. So let me give you two real quick suggestions for how we serve people. Number one, we can serve people individually. As God brings people into your life, you make the decision to help that person at their point of need. We can do it individually. Secondly, we can be part of organized, systematic ministries that help people. Through donations, through volunteering, we can make a difference. And then let me just third, add a third one, you know, just real quickly, a third one. Learn about the needs of others. Um, if you don't know much about the poor, the undereducated, don't just go on your assumptions, but actually educate yourself and learn. If you don't know much about people who've been sexually abused, don't, don't depend on your just thoughts. Um, read and learn. Educate yourself. Um, it was very helpful for me when um, I read Rachel Denhollander's book, What is a Girl Worth? Because she was the first one to publicly go you know, to, to publicly accuse Larry Nasser, the Olympic doctor, the Michigan State physician. And hers, she's a devout believer, and her book is a very well-written, logical um, story, makes a lot of great points. If you, if, you don't, if you don't understand the struggles of minorities, educate yourself. See, I can't have the right attitude and heart to help people if I don't understand their situation. And it's incumbent on me as a believer to do it individually and to be part of processes that help, which means I also need to be educating myself so that I, I know how to do it. I can speak in a constructive way into the issues in this country that is so divided. We can, we can actually be part of the solution if we just take the heart of Jesus and let it shape our heart. Take the attitude of Jesus and let it shape our attitude. I hope you'll think about that. Maybe, maybe read a book. Maybe have a conversation with somebody who's uh, different than you, learn and help a stranger, help a prisoner, help somebody who's been mistreated, help somebody that God brings into your life. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you not only next Monday as we start in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, but also Sunday morning for worship on campus and in person at 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock or online on YouTube, Facebook, a website, etc. 7 o'clock, 9, 10, 10, 30, and then throughout the day and throughout next week. God bless you, and we'll see you Sunday.